Hey guys, Helping Hands, and today I'll be going over your fourth tip of the week, which is all about grenades. Who's the best bowler? Let's begin by talking about the many different types of grenades in Company of Heroes 3. What you just saw then was the Sapper Squad lobbing their 69 hand grenade, which costs 25 munitions. Let's just do that again for you here. They need actually Veteran C1 before they can lob their standard grenades. This is your bog standard normal nade. You then have the Gurkhas, which have a 35 munition grenade, which is a grenade assault. If you played Company Heroes 2, it's very similar to the infiltration grenades that the Axis Infantry used to have. So this, when you activate this, every single man in the squad will lob a grenade, which is very good against any infantry in that area. With lots of amount of damage. They've also got access to a smoke grenade at 30 munitions as well, which is great because it blocks the line of sight between you and your opponent. And uh, you'll be able to maybe sneak through it or maybe c uh, cover uh, your retreat, th things like that. You've also got grenades here from the infantry section. So the infantry section's got access to rifle grenade and anti-tank grenades. To get access to that, you need to upgrade the grenade package here. Grenade package. So here we have the rifle grenade. So rifle grenade here looks like this. One guy from the squad goes in a crouch position, lobs the grenade like so. so. That's a good way to maybe lob over a wall or something, that kind of thing. Attention. Or up a hill. Anti-tank grenades. These will only be acting. You can only use these on enemy vehicles. So here we have an infantry section. Lob the and then we use the anti-tank grenade here. There you go. Takes some damage to enemy armor. Then you have the foot guardsmen. They have the light gammon bomb. This is a bit more damage than your bog standard grenade like the engineers have over here. You've also got access to such things like the Recon Flare if you upgrade your Tommy section with the Recce package for 45 munitions. Currently, the flares are free across the board for every faction that has access to flares like this. Probably going to get changed in a future patch, but still very good ability. You, what you would do is you would use the flare at the max distance here, drop a flare in the sky, and what that does, one guy shoots a flare into the sky like so, and it reveals a big area and you know in, in that certain circumference. This is great because now I know the enemy position so I can come over here and then drop myself some artillery. Another kind of type of grenade. This is like a flare grenade. Off we go with the grenade, go grenade going in. A little bit of a cool down on that. That will do some red smoke on the ground. And then after that, then there'll be some artillery firing on this position which will hopefully damage these units. Which is uh, from the base artillery over here. Another type of grenade is the anti-tank satchel charge that Bazooka Squad and like units like the Gustatory have. So what you do is you use this again, like 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 a standard anti-tank grenade, but this will do generally a lot more damage than your standard anti-tank grenade. Another type of grenade that's available is the red phosphorus grenade, as we're going to indicate here on this squad. So what this does. Acts as like a continuous damage if there's in the squad that stays in it. It also acts like a smoke grenade and blocks the line of sight. If I make this my own squad as well and try to move around, it does slow me down a little bit as well. I'm not as going to be as fast as I normally am in that smoke grenade. So you don't want to be sitting in that type of grenade. And something very similar to that type of grenade as well is also what we have over here. We have the resistance fighters. And here they have access to an incendiary grenade, which is a kind of area of denial type of grenade. You lob this on the ground. Any unit that's caught in that... You know, they'll take continuous uh, AoE damage by standing in the flames. Next, I'm going to teach you about the two ways to look out for grenades. First, the animation of the unit lobbing the grenade. And second, the audio cue that you may sometimes get from your own squad when a grenade's being used against you. So here we have an engineer squad, the Sapper squad. Let's say we're going to lob a grenade with it. As soon as I start lobbing a grenade, let's move, let's move the squad a bit. We press V, we drop the grenade down. One guy immediately starts going back to like to his waist and prepares the grenade right so if you're looking out for th that type of animation you might be able to prepare for the grenade being lobbed and then move out of cover in time so here we go look at the animation Stop everything. What's happening? you can see there's a clear animation there of the grenade being lobbed will bring prepped before it's being lobbed which will buy you an extra extra time to get out of there however if you're the, those keen eyed of you, you'll notice that I can see the animation going and then press W on my on my hotkeys to stop the animation going off. And that actually saves me the grenade. If I do this, 
sometimes they the opposite players will have audio cues that a grenade's being lobbed and they might preemptively get out of cover even though you've not lobbed the grenade. So you could kind of faint lobbing grenades to maybe push your opponent out of cover and maybe close the distance and get you in that, that cover yourself, which is quite a sneaky little strategy there. So here we have a sapper squad charging me and it's going to be lobbing a grenade onto my Panzer Grenadier squad. Listen for the audio cue here. Hopefully it will happen. See, my guy said Granata. So if I'm away from my squad, I can quickly maybe come back here and move out of the way and dodge that grenade. Now, sometimes these audio cues don't occur, which is very frustrating, and I think it's a bug in the game, but this happened in Evening Company Heroes 2, where sometimes grenades would be lobbed and your unit would not react to it or, or you know, give you an audio cue that something's being lobbed. Specifically in Code 2, I remember it being the penals lobbing a satchel charge. You know, your units would not alert you to that danger. And so, again, there seems to, be, seems to be some kind of same issue here in Company Heroes 3, where, you know, sometimes the audio cue might not happen, but sometimes it does, but just... Bear in mind that you need, you know, you should always just try to be att pay attention to your units anyway. But you can you know, listen out for that audio cue because sometimes it might save your units getting grenaded. So, guys, now I'm going to show you an example of what happens where you know a, a, my opponent will try and fake me out here to force me out of cover while I actually not lobbing a grenade. So here comes Sir Tobit now. He's going to come down the road. Listen to the audio cue. There we go. My guy said grenade, but there was actually no grenade. So if I was looking away from the map, if I was on the other side of the map, my guys would have said, oh, grenade, I come back to this. And there's actually no grenade. And I would have maybe panicked, retreated, think there's a grenade being lobbed. And uh, there was no grenade. So this is a great way to maybe fake somebody out. If there's a lot of action going on, maybe your opponent's distracted, they might uh, instantly just re you know panic, retreat something, thinking there's going to be a grenade. And there isn't actually one happening right there. Next, guys, I'm going to show you how important it is to grenade, for instance, the doorway rather than grenade the center of the house. This house here, for instance, if I garrison this house with this squad and I click retreat, they always exit this side of the, of the building. So with that knowledge in mind, nading this side of the, of the house, this doorway in particular, would be better. So I'm going to get in the house now, and so Tobit's going to actually show you how much damage a grenade does in the center of a house just as you know just to show to you guys how much more damage it would be better to do by the door so here he's going to come with the grenade uh, with the grenadier squad now oh, off she goes here comes a grenade so he's going to ride just in the center of the building let's say i'm getting out didn't take any damage that time from that grenade at all okay this time satoba aims at the doorway so here comes a grenade. Let's say I'm coming out trying to uh, yeah, it's great, react too late. And look how much more damage I've taken there. I took about half health damage compared to before and where I took no damage. So a lot better to aim at the doorway because that's where units generally clump up before they can uh, get out and, and run away. I could have gotten out the other side of the door uh, and maybe not taken any damage at all. But some people might panic retreat or panic react and get out that way. And that's how you can punish them. Here's another good use of grenades. Here I'm using grenade timed well on the retreat path of an enemy unit to help me get some more model kills on this squad. In this final clip, guys, I'm going to show you how you could use, like, for instance, the Pathfinder's flare, rifle grenade, and smoke grenade all together to take out a machine gun, for instance. So first of all, we're going to pop a flare in the sky to give us vision and maybe spot where our opponent may be at. So there goes the flare in the sky right now. Now we know the machine gun is here. Let's say if I wanted to attack it from the front, but I would need to I would drop a smoke grenade in first, so I would cover my approach. There goes the smoke. We know the machine gun is still there. Let's say he doesn't move, for instance. And then we use the smoke to move up, and then we lob the rifle grenade in where we think the machine gun was. Like so. So there you go. And then obviously, you know, you might be using other units to help you out. Maybe a second rifle grenade from another Pathfinder there. But hopefully it gives you guys an idea of what you might be able to accomplish with using all these different types of like grenades and flares. So guys, that's the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and want more content, check up over here and over here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the button down here. Um, to catch the next video, guys. Take care. And I'll see you soon.